Those are not alum rounds because alum rounds fall. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and nobody shoots in a five gun section. This is crazy. No, you can see like an outline or something. Yeah. It's moving. Hey, what you got? Your leader. Oh, hell no. Yo, we got aliens out here, dog. <laughs> My phone camera says. Yo, this is fucking weird. We got UFOs outside. Yo, like we're all dead. Everyone. Uh, the weaponized podcast uh, hosted by Jeremy and George released a new video or actually videos of what they are describing as a triangular shaped UFO over 29 palms in California. Well, quickly, the story that came out on weaponized was this triangular shaped UFO was seen in 2021. And uh, they uh, in this podcast have shot down, so to speak, the flare theory and essentially are calling this UAP. When I saw it, I immediately went back to my time as a producer and writer on the History Channel show UFO Hunters. And it was very uh, similar, I would say, a lot of times to what I saw the early this morning from from Jeremy and George. And most of the time when we would look into these types of cases, it was always military activity in or around a military base. In this case, 29 Palms, California has quite a bit of activity out there. So it didn't take that long to start researching exactly what was going on at the time in the area and on the exact same date. So let me bring up a window here and kind of go through with you guys to show you a perspective that was not offered to you when this video was released. I wish I had an explanation of why. Um, I have tweeted it out and posted it out quite a few times now. And hopefully there will be a response from George and Jeremy. Uh, not necessarily has to be to me, but there's a lot of people that are intrigued on why this part of the story was omitted from the actual story itself. Uh, there were military witnesses, and that's great. Uh, that's something that we all want to see. Military witnesses are great, high credibility. Um, but we all know everybody or anybody can be wrong at one point or another. So what's going on here? Why were we not given all the context? So what I did was early this morning, I started researching, as I said, exactly like we did in the uh, UFO hunters days, uh, because more times than not, if something was near a military ex uh, military installation, then the military was generally part of the explanation. Not because we were out to debunk everything, nor am I trying to do that here. So what I did discover uh, doing, again, that, that same type of approach was that on the date, April 20th, 2021, it was during a training exercise, which lasts about seven weeks, at the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center in 29 Palms, California, the exact same spot where Jeremy and George reported this uh, triangle UAP took place. Now, that exact same date is pretty coincidental. And when you dig in a little bit further, you realize on the exact same night, there were numerous ground operations. These are officially released DOD photos of, uh, you can see, Marine Aviation Weapons and Tactics Squadron 1, the date taken, you can see down here, is April 20th, 2021, the exact same date and same night as the UAP was taken. And this uh, particular operation was well underway with multiple aircraft. You can see some of the helicopters here that were on the ground and launched and deployed that, that night, including ground forces when you really dig into that activity. Here is a little bit more. You can see this video. Let me zoom in on it. Uh, this is some of the footage from that night, that very night. You can see how much activity. I won't play the whole thing for you, uh, but I will scrub through a little bit so you can kind of see exactly uh, what was going on. You can see all of the nighttime operations, both on the ground, in the air. 
You can see how much activity there really was on the base. Now, again, this is the exact same night. This is the exact same locale. This is the exact same military installation in 29 Palms, California. Now, when I first posted this, I wanted to see how many people would actually play the video. It's five minutes in length. And again, you see all sorts of cool nighttime footage. It's all B-roll. You get it from the Department of Defense. So people like me that were working in television, this stuff was gold because when you were talking about, let's say, 29 Palms, you could go to the Department of Defense and get actual B-roll from 29 Palms and show some of the military activity. But if you play to the very end, watch this. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. A couple more seconds. Look at that. How many lights do you see? One, two, three, four, five. Now, obviously, this was a DOD video, so shot much closer than those iPhone video clips that I showed you earlier. You could see they were way far in the distance. And when you watch, you can see they're pretty far out there, which may explain the quote unquote silent attribute that many of the witnesses were talking about. This obviously is much, much closer. Now, let me preface this next section by saying I am not going to bet my house on the fact that what we are looking at are these particular aircraft flares. But stick with me for a minute because I'll let you decide on whether or not you are convinced it is. So obviously the five lights match. This was the exact same night as the April 20th, 2021 um, UAP event. You can see it down here again, April 20, 2021. This was the page for the official release of that DOD video that I just showed you. So it was all shot on the same evening. Now, as the morning progressed, and I'm posting all this stuff out there, um, people are starting to catch on. Hey, wait a minute. Why was all of this context omitted from the story? Now, I wish I had an answer for you on that, but I don't. So why did Jeremy and George conveniently leave that out? They said that they spent two years researching this particular case, and that's great. It, it needs to be researched, and I can completely understand vetting sources and looking into this. The problem is, is that you've removed an entire context to the story. That could very well be a UAP, and heck, it could very well be an alien craft. Highly unlikely, but let's just go with that for a second. Why would you leave out the entire context of a major military operation and training exercise that was going out uh, going on on the same night in the same location? So let me show you a couple more visuals before I end this to kind of drive the point home. That was the still frame from the video. Again, just uh, p pointing out that there are five lights just like that UAP shot on 420 2021 five lights there. Now, some may look at it and go, well, wait a minute, John, that's not an exact match. So maybe it's close. Maybe there are five lights, but who no, there, there's no way because there was so many witnesses and so on and so forth. So I posted all of this out. Now check this out. Mick West posted this, and I know that Mick West is known as the debunker. He calls himself a debunker, but watch what he does here with what I posted and he, he mirrors the image, it looks like. And you can see there he, he mirrors it. Just just means that maybe like it's a, a an iPhone, a back of the iPhone or something like that. And watch what he does. Now, there is no possible way that this would just be simply a coincidence. You can see he shows everything that he does. These are the images I posted, and anybody can confirm this. Your left side is the official DOD release of footage from the military exercise. The right is one of the photographs that Jeremy had released on Weaponized along with all the other uh, videos. And you can see it as a near match on where all those lights are placed. Now, what are the odds that all of that is just simply a match and, a, and it's all a coincidence? In my opinion, <laughs> not very. So to drive the point home, you've got the same night, the same number of lights, the same exact configuration, all matches up, yet you were not told about the context of any of that. And in the two years, this is the two ways to look at it. In the two years, they never found it or they maliciously held it from you. Why? Because it's pretty clear in my mind what this, what this is. I, I mean, there's, there's really kind of no other way around it. Um, 
if you if you have if you have an explanation, if you have some kind of alternative theory, I'm all for it. But you have to to then explain how the configuration matches. And if it wasn't clear enough, because um, I'm not sure if I if I did point it out properly, um, just to do one last thing. Let me see if I can even zoom in. That eh, doesn't really work. You can see the trails. So forgive me if I did point that out earlier, but I wanted to make sure that I said that one last time that you can see those trails as those flares descend. So I think that to me, there's a, a, a an obvious connection here and why all that context was was removed. I have no idea. So as of the recording of this video, I've seen the Daily Mail cover at the same usual suspects, Josh Boswell and Chris Sharp, uh, who I believe I've either talked on this show or other shows about the lack of research when reporting on these topics. Now, of course, they're beloved in the UFO conversation by many uh, simply because they tell people, I think, what they want to hear. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful here, but you have to look at now the history, especially with this story, uh, because those those articles that were published in the Daily Mail completely omit any of this context. So what are they doing? Are they just simply parroting what they are told from Jeremy and George? Well, that's bad in itself. That's not journalism. That's PR. Or are they just not caring at all? To, to Maybe they did find this and go, oh, that kind of ruins our our narrative here. So let's just go ahead and omit all that. No matter which way you slice it or dice it, it doesn't look good. So it's not that I'm trying to attack these individuals. I'm sure they're fine people. I don't know them personally. Um, but when called out and, and I posted like, why was this ignored in your reporting? I was immediately blah. I was called a child. And, 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 and all I did was ask the question. I'm sorry. It's just an honest question. Why did you omit it? I was blocked by Sh uh, Christopher Sharp. I have since asked Josh Boswell at the, around the same time frame, have not heard as of the recording of this video. Um, so why is that? And, and that's what I don't understand. That's what I can't figure out. But at the very end of the day, it's, it stinks to have to do this as someone who comes from the mindset that the government is actively covering this topic up, that there's a lot more to it, right? That's my mindset. That's what I can safely tell you. To have to show this type of stuff makes me look like the debunker when I sh shouldn't. And, I, and the reason I say that is journalism's, journalists should do journalism and they should do their job. Even if there's no connection to the military exercise whatsoever, that's great. Is it worth a mention? Absolutely. Because if this was truly UAP, or maybe it is, sure, I'll accept that. You have to give the full context. Because if you don't, you're either parroting a story that you are told to, you're parroting a story that you want to, but at the end of the day, you're doing absolutely no research whatsoever. And for tonight's Future of Everything, we're going to talk about UFOs because it is my hope that in the near future we figure out whatever the heck has been going on in our skies. And if you follow a lot of the UFO incidents involving the U.S. military, you might have seen a lot of people talking about several videos of what looks like a triangle seeming to hover, hover over a base out at 29 Palms here in California. This was all released in the last day by documentary filmmaker Jeremy Corbell. Take a quick listen. Those are not aluminum rounds because aluminum rounds fall. Yeah, yeah. And, and nobody shoots in a five gun section. There's more lights around it. Well, this is fucking weird. UFOs now, Jeremy Corbell and the co-host of the podcast Weaponized, uh, George Knapp, say they have been looking into this since 2021. There's another uh, image right there. He says, according to reports from witnesses, the whole thing only lasted about 10 minutes from 820 when it appeared to 830 when it blinked out. According to Corbell, it was seen by more than 50 people, many of them Marines at Camp Wilson, who, camp uh, who captured those images, but they, they just couldn't explain what they saw. If you look in the picture, you can see like a black triangular shape. Why are these not flares? Uh, because they stayed there for a solid 10 minutes, just in the same spot. And flares don't sit in one spot for 10 minutes? 
no, they definitely, they fall. And Jeremy Corbell himself joins us right now in the studio. Uh, so Jeremy, real quick, set the scene for us here. Yeah, so this happened back in 2021, and I, of course, I thought it was flares at first. A bunch of Marines started coming to me. I was able to find them within 36 hours. They saw a craft, so this is not something lights in the sky. They actually saw the body, the shape of the craft, and you see that in the low light photo. So they basically said, you know, what's going on? What is this? And I was worried about the reporting process. We dug into it for a number of years. Luckily, they shot up lumen flares, so you can see the difference of what a lumen flare is. And most flares, they last within one minute to three minutes max. This object, or I'll say craft, because you can see the body of it, sat there from 10 some reports say up to 25 minutes unmoving. So this is why I thought it was important, bringing it out to the public, trying to crowdsource and figure out this UAP. It's just an unidentified. The point is we're trying to identify. And, and we're trying to identify something that happened over a military base with a lot of military service members all around. Uh, we reached out to the Pentagon. I know the Marine that you spoke to said that they ruled out flares, but the Pentagon tells us that there was an airspace uh, tactics and instructor course happening around the same time. And there's video of that training. I think we have some of that video that has been declassified. Uh, you can see choppers through night vision. You can see tracer fire. You can see flares. And then right at the end, there are a couple of seconds uh, showing something that's in it's kind of in a similar shape to that triangle uh do you think that that could be the same thing some of this exercise that you're seeing right here those appear to be flares kind of in a triangle shape uh, do you think that that could be what these marines saw yeah so that's the question is were these flares the problem is is the duration and all of the witnesses that saw the body of a triangular a triangular shaped craft so initially that was my thought but over over these years and working with people, it, they saw the craft itself, the body of it. And that's what you see in that low light video. Now, I don't know, it's a huge base. It's almost a thousand miles wide. So showing me a video, we need to know if it identically matches up to the time. Look, I'm trying to solve the case too, but I can't discount the Marines that are telling me they saw the craft. One of the interesting things about this case is so that is declassified video that we're seeing right now of the training exercise. Uh, the Pentagon says that they had no report of UAP activity and there is a, a, a procedure now for UAPs to be reported all the way up to the Pentagon. They're saying that there were no reports given. Is that what you're hearing from the Marines? Did they ever try to file a report with the government? Yes, yeah, so that was the problem. We weren't getting information. Now, we've seen that over and over and over. Remember, the 2004 Tic Tac event, that UFO event was during a training exercise. The 2019 UAPs were during a training exercise. There's always training going on there at that base. So that's what we're trying to get is better transparency to move that information up and better reporting process. People should not have to be calling journalists. They should be reporting it through the normal chain of command. But that is not happening. Now, one other question. I mean, as soon as you posted that, everyone was talking about the Phoenix Lights, like one of the most well-documented UFO mass sightings uh, there's been. What did you think when you saw this? Did you think Phoenix Lights as well? Well, when you see that five section of lights that shows that there, it appears to be a very similar visually to the Phoenix Lights, but the size was about half the size of a football field when they could see the body of the craft. And that's what just keeps coming back at me. I want to know the truth too. I want to see proper reporting. But that connection between an object in the sky with the Phoenix Lights is because of the body of the craft. You can see it in the low light photo. You can see it, and that's what the witnesses tell me. So I don't know, ma'am, this is an unidentified, that's UAP. When you're reporting this stuff, you just gotta try to figure out what it is. And I think the next number of days is really going to uh, highlight how th these types of investigations work. So you can't say what it is, but you can't say what it isn't. It is unidentified, <laughs> that is a UAP. But let's find out together, that's why we put it out. Asking the public and anybody else that was there to help fill in the voids. Jeremy Corbell. Hey man, so great much. to see you, thank you.